Hi everyone, my name is Tristan from the CPAPstore.ca. Today we're gonna to be talking about dry mouth, but before I do, um, we've just reduced a lot of our prices at the CPAP store uh, for April. So if you need a new mask, try looking at the CPAPstore.ca. Also, if you haven't tried our uh, mask sizing system, it looks like that, and you just basically need a ruler to size a CPAP mask. I know a lot of CPAP masks come with the size guide, but you don't really know your size until you get the mask. So check out our size guides um, on our website. They're just, every product will have its own size guide and we're pretty happy with it. Now today we're gonna to be talking about dry mouth. What is dry mouth? Well, lots of times when you're using your CPAP machine like this, especially, you know, like a nasal cradle like that, or, you know, pillow cradle, anything that doesn't cover the mouth, you're gonna be having some of that pressure go out of your mouth, especially if you're using a little bit too much pressure, that extra airflow is gonna go through your nose and sometimes if your mouth is open, gonna go out of your mouth. Now this will create a very dry mouth. This will make you dehydrated, it'll be very uncomfortable. And dry mouth also has a list of other negatives such as tooth decay or dental problems, um, a higher likelihood of be becoming sick and stuff like that. So you don't want to breathe through your mouth and you especially don't want dry mouth. Now one of the main reasons for dry mouth is you have too much pressure in your device. Now sometimes depending on what your sleep therapist gave you access to, you can do it uh, in your your normal menu, but sometimes you have to go to the uh, clinical menu. To go to a clinical menu of um, the CPAP AirSense 11 here, you'll have to click both of these guys here and then you'll get to the clinical menu. Then you can click settings and you'll see mode, CPAP, pressure, and you can change the pressure. So now you don't wanna just decrease the pressure like to whatever random amount. You wanna look at your AHI levels, your apnea hypopnea index, okay? And if you're below a five or below a six or whatever, if you have low amount of apneas um, and your sleep apnea uh, therapy is very effective for you, then you should be able to decrease that pressure, you know, by, you know, a notch or two. And hopefully that will allow you to uh, keep your mouth closed a little easier. Now, if the pressure you're using is uh, at the limit, you know, you can't lower any more, uh, otherwise you'll have unaffected sleep apnea. There's a couple more things that you can do. So one thing you can do is increase the humidity levels of your machine. You can, you can try to increase the temperature of your humidity um, or your, you know, your heated tube if you have a heated line. That's gonna allow you to be breathing uh, warmer and more humid air. So heat is important because you have little hairs in your nasal tract um, called cilia. And the, basically the cilia's job is to sweep back mucus. So, you know, you're not always flowing mucus out of your nose because that'd be gross. Um, but when it's too cold outside or when you have a house that's too cold or you're breathing in too cold air, those cilia kind of um, paralyze themselves. They stop working properly. And that's why you will have a mucus buildup or you'll feel that your sinuses are getting more plugged, which is why if you go, you know, outside in the really cold air, your nose is gonna start running. That's exactly what's happening. Your cilia are getting paralyzed or just aren't working as effectively and then your mucus starts flowing out. So if your air is too cold, uh, you're gonna have more mucus and that's gonna clog up your nose and then you're gonna want to breathe out of your mouth, all right? That's why you need the heat. With the humidity, it's also important because dry air, really dry air, will, uh, will just cause inflammation in your uh, nasal passage and that will also make you wanna breathe out of your mouth. So just make sure that you have a good, warm, humid air going into your lungs. The next thing is a type of mask. So in times where you do have a plugged nose, you should have a full face mask. So you should always keep a full face mask on hand uh, for when you have allergies or when you're sick or something like that, just to use it as a relief mask every once in a while. But there are nasal masks that are a little easier to breathe out of um, and, and aren't. Um, I find that breathing out of the dream wear line is quite good. Uh, one of my favorite masks is the P10. But what I find with the P10, if you're not used to CPAP, it the exhalation pores aren't re are they're really small. It's kind of hard to exhale out of your nose with the P10, especially if you're not used to CPAP. Um, so there are some masks that are a little bit better um, and some masks that are a little bit worse at being able to breathe easily. Um, so you might wanna go to your sleep therapist, maybe try some on at your sleep clinic and see which one is right for you. So those are all things to do that you can try that you don't need more equipment. Uh, but there are some extra steps that you can do. For example, a chin strap, uh, we sell various chin straps on our website and that's gonna keep your mouth closed and that's gonna really help force yourself to breathe out of your mouth. Now, some people hate chin straps because it's just, you're adding more gear. So if you are wearing a chin strap, I would try to pick a mask that is a little more minimal Right, so you have some masks like the Viterra by Christian Peichel, which is, you know, there's a lot going on. And then there's some masks like the N30, right? Very minimal mask. If you are wearing 
uh, chin strap and you find it a little uncomfortable, try to maybe find a, a CPAP mask that's gonna be a little more minimalistic so you don't have so much stuff on your face. But for the most part, chin straps are gonna do a really good job at holding your mouth closed and uh, allowing you to have proper mouth posture and not getting dry mouth. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is mouth tape. Uh, this is actually the reason why I decided to make this video because I kind of looked up this topic. Uh, we get a lot of questions about this topic from our clients. And uh, so I looked up to see what they're kind of getting informed about. And a lot of CPAP YouTubers, you could say, are saying use mouth tape. Uh, I'm gonna be the one that says, I don't think you should use mouth tape. I think mouth tape can be dangerous, especially if you're using CPAP. Now, the funny thing is, Melt tape can be good if you are not using CPAP and you just wanna practice correct mouth posture and you're not having any nasal issues. The reason why it's bad with CPAP is because you already are susceptible to closing your airway and having something on your mouth um, is adding another layer to that. So you already are having a tongue or throat or whatever that's closing up and now you're gonna close your mouth. It seems a little risky, right? But these YouTubers are saying, to do that, right, if you have a CPAP machine, right, because you, then you have something that's gonna be blowing air into your nose and therefore it's not a problem, uh, it's not a danger, right? But that being said, it is a danger because if there is a problem with your CPAP device or if there's a power outage, uh, twofold are gonna happen. Number one, you're gonna have a sleep apnea and you're gonna have your mouth closed. And because it's taped closed, you're not gonna be able to open your mouth to take a deep breath. The second thing, and what is never talked about, I don't know why, is that if you have a defective machine or there's a power outage or whatever, you can keep breathing through your nose, right? But you're gonna be starting to breathe the same carbon dioxide air through your tube. It'll be like breathing through a closed snorkel. You're gonna be breathing out and breathing back in the same air and your body's not gonna know that you're breathing poor quality air because you're still taking breaths and you're still exhaling breaths, right? And now you have the danger of having a closed system of your machine's not working, you already have sleep apnea, your mouth is closed, and now you're taking breaths of your own exhale breath air, uh, which can have some health consequences and can be flat out dangerous. So if you wanna use mouth tape, I highly recommend you talk to your sleep therapist and your doctor before you do that because there are some reasons why uh, it's not advised and I wouldn't just take other YouTubers uh, word for it. Uh, at the CPAP store, we try to be you know, as safe for our clients as possible and it's something that's definitely gonna be at the bottom of the list to uh, fix dry mouth in, in my opinion. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is uh, practice. Practice is actually really important. And I know when it comes to things like this, like physiotherapy, people go to physiotherapy, they hate doing their exercises and they don't get better. And people hate doing their breathing exercises uh, and then your dry mouth's not gonna get better. But at the end of the day, practice is really key. And when I talk about practice, I mean practice breathing through your nose. Even throughout the day, you should try practicing through your nose, whether you're typing on the computer, out for a run, doing exercises, working out in the gym. Try to close your mouth and breathe out of your nose. This will train yourself to breathe out of your nose more often and will allow you to have a clearer pathway. The saying, if you don't use it, you lose it, is really true when it comes to breathing out of your nose. People who tend to breathe out of their mouth more and more frequency at night and then even during the day will have their nasal passage slowly close up and clog up. And then it eventually comes to the point where you can't even fathom breathing out of your nose and you just think of yourself as someone who breathes out of their mouth or as a mouth breather because there is no clarity in your nose. You're like, how would anyone breathe out of their nose? Mine's totally clogged up. That's generally because of years of not breathing out of your nose, not using your nose. And those sinuses, those airways, those passages slowly just start to uh, clog up and shrink and stuff like that. I, for one, have had personal experience with this. When I was a kid, I had a lot of allergies, a lot of seasonal allergies, and there would be three, four, five month blocks of the year where I could never breathe out of my nose because everything inside me was so clogged up. I developed the habit of breathing out of my mouth more often and it became a normal thing for me. And until I learned about the reason of why mouth breathing was harmful in my late teens, I breathed out of my mouth. And because of that, I started breathing out of my nose. And over time, I found that it got a lot, a lot easier. And it actually only took me maybe two weeks to notice a difference, but I was really conscious 
throughout the day, working, studying, uh, going exercising to always be breathing out of my nose. And over time, my nasal passages opened up and it was a lot easier to keep my mouth shut uh, when sleeping. Now that's not always the case. I definitely notice that sometimes I wake up with dry mouth, like 100%, I, I wake up with dry mouth. I think a lot of people do, um, but it can get better and practice does make perfection. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it a little bit useful. Check out the cpapstore.ca for the best price CPAP supplies in Canada or subscribe for more of our content. Take care.